you think about the people listening to this and the why of, of using these, is that the why of gardeners, market farmers is probably the primary audience listening to this. I apply humic substances to my fields to increase the mineralization content, like add more trace minerals that aren't there, or is there something else you think? There's, there's three components to the, to the humates and I would cover them each in turn uh, real briefly. And the first one is the mineral profile. Like you said, yeah, it's rich in minerals. You're going to get those minerals back in a highly leached soil. You're absolutely providing minerals. The other thing is humic substances are naturally a component of your soil organic matter. So the one thing that you're getting with the humic substances is you're hitting the fast forward button. So it took millions and millions of years to turn this plant material into what it is now. Uh, 50 pounds of humate equals about 1,500 pounds of compost or manure before that decomposition process. So if you could hit the fast forward button and get you some of that stable organic matter, that's a huge benefit. And the last thing is actual, the, the, the physical characteristics on the soil. So when you put humic substances down in the soil, you're actually increasing your um, soil's ability to hold water and nutrients. And I'll throw out a number. This is um, from the USDA um, NRCS. And they state that a 1% change in soil organic matter will conserve 30,000 more gallons of water per acre. So if you had a rain event or some irrigation cycle and you were able to retain that much more water in the soil. Now, it doesn't make the soil more soggy. It just creates macropores and micropores where that water and nutrients can be stored. And that's the interesting thing is by increasing your soil's ability to attach these, you know, create space for water, you're also creating space to hold nutrients. And we've got several university trials where we've applied humic acid with nitrogen, even less amounts of nitrogen, and got more yield out of it. And that's because that soil was able to hold those nutrients longer, give that plant a longer opportunity to use those nutrients. So you have a one component of that that's, it's like, a sponge, right? It's more of a physical yeah. thing. It's, it's, hey, I'm holding water, I'm creating poor space, I'm aggregating soil. The organic matter, just raising the organic matter, if we, well, if we put that part of it aside, are microbes eating this as food? So is this an, or is this a microbe food that you're also adding to the soil? That, that's a really common question. It's actually, they're connecting the wrong dots. So when you put humic substances down, a lot of people will see microbial activity go up. They say, wow, this is a great microbe food. But the truth is the humic substances have gone through their you know, degradation process by microbes. It's not the first thing at the buffet that they want to eat. Um, the humic substances are the paper plate <laughs> at the buffet. <laughs> They're going to eat everything else first. Microbes really don't want to eat humic substances. But humic substances aggregate things. So if you were to, a microbe in the soil and you were looking for things like air, oxygen, water, you know, humic substances by forming those soil colloids in the aggregate create space for air, oxygen, and water. So you see increased microbial activity because of the environmental changes that occur with humic substances. Uh, a good friend of mine once described the humic substances as a million dollar house for microbes. You know, they're not eating the house, but that's surely where the party is happening. And I think that's, the reason you add that is if you're facilitating microbial activity, you know, humic substances are kind of that nexus. If I had unlimited compost of high quality, is there any reason to look at humic substances, like concentrated humic substances like this versus just apply, 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 apply compost? So I'll, I'll um, try to divide it out in two different categories. So we use humic substances the first is the soil amendment, try to build organic matter. And if I had a, just in a, a, a huge amount of compost, like you said, no, you, you're not adding organic matter that's, you, you've already got sufficient amount, right? So you, you're not adding, adding a little bit of humic substances may, may not help you. What we found though, is some of the extracts do elicit a biostimulant response. So if you even had a soil that had high organic matter and you applied a humic substance in a small amount of the plant leaf, you can see a biostimulant response. And we've seen this in cornfields in central Iowa. And, you know, some really, in agriculture, we, we describe them as ice cream ground, you know, really nice, 
loamy, rich soils, and you still see a response with humic substances when foliar applied. So, yeah, I would categorize these in two different categories. One is acting as a biostimulant, and one is building your soil organic matter. You know, the truth is adding a few gallons of humic acid fully applied is never going to do anything to build your soil organic matter. It's a drop in the bucket. Um, just to quantify that number, if you took an acre of soil six to eight inches deep, you know, from a, a farm field and pushed all that soil into one pile, you'd have about two million pounds of soil. So to change that two million pounds, one percent, that would be adding 20,000 pounds of pure organic matter. Now, the USDA indicates in their 1% program, they've got a program specifically on this topic, and it's a 1% challenge to change your soil organic matter 1%. They indicate you've got a 10 to 1 conversion. So for every 10 pounds of, of active organic matter you put down, you're going to end up with about 1 pound of passive organic matter. So stable organic matter that stays in the soil. So if you took that and applied it to your 20,000 pound figure I just threw at you, that's 200,000 pounds per acre of, of compost or manure you've got to put down to change your soil organic matter 1%. And that's just this huge amount of material that nobody's going to put down. There's just no way you've got 200,000 pounds of, of compost to put down. So to flip that over and say, okay, we're going to put three pounds of humic acid down and change things. It's not accurate. You know, we're, we're seeing, we're applying that product at those rates because we're seeing a biostimulant response. Um, you're applying the granular humate at higher rates to build your soil organic matter. So to your example, yeah, if you've got a whole bunch of compost, humate's not going to be adding a whole lot of organic matter benefit. Um, some of the benefits you get from humate that you might not consider, um, humate's pH 3.0, so you get some acidity. There's a little bit of iron, sulfur, and trace minerals you might not have in the compost. And so we'll, we still pe see people add humate in small amounts, maybe like 10 pounds per cubic yard, and still add it to their compost or, or manures. Do you find that, I guess, I mean, the answer is going to be varies, but is foliar application maybe one of the better ways to use this then? Yeah, so it's kind of a, it's like having a bucket full of hammers and saying which one's the best for the job. And the same thing is true of these humic substances is sometimes you're using humic substances just for nutrient delivery. Sometimes we're using them to increase absorption. Um, I'm in the Mountain West here, and a lot of times what we're dealing with is salts. You know, we've got high salts in our, our soil, we've got high salts in our water. And so a lot of guys are injecting humic substances with their water to simply just soak up some of those salts. Now, you've got to remember, humic substances have an affinity for all positively charged ions, right? Calcium, potassium, ammonium, sodium. It doesn't say, you know, the sodium's not allowed. They're all positively charged, so they're going to be attracted to the humic molecule. So we're using these tools in different ways. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes we're using them to attach uh, divalent and trivalent metal ions like iron and zinc to increase absorption. So it's a tool and, and you've got to look at how you're using it. Let's say I'm in Florida and I've got a really low CEC soil, so a real sandy type soil with, with low retention. Uh, this is a good point. Um, Live Earth Products has been on the Rose Bowl Stadium since 2006. You know, why is that? The Rose Bowl can afford as much fertilizer as they want. It's the Rose Bowl Stadium. But the problem is that stadium is built on, on about 15 inches of pure silica sand. They have virtually no nutrient retention in that soil. So they're adding humic substances like our humic acid with the fertility to make that fertility last longer. So those are how you use these tools. It's, it's a binding tool. to it. Yeah, it, 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 the, it's, people will say chelation, but technically it's complexing. It's, a, it's, com it's complexing that nutrient. And the thing is, this normally occurs in your soil anyway. So humic substances are in every soil all, everywhere. We're just, when you're applying a humic substance, you're basically, it's like playing musical chairs and adding more chairs to the game. You're increasing spots where those nutrients can be held. So if I wanted, if, let's say I was spraying any other nutrient foliarly, I would benefit by putting fulvic acid in that spray by increasing absorption. Yeah. So humic or fulvic. So in my college years, I was a professional applicator. I went out and squirted lawns. That's all I did, you know, after I got out of class. And my mix was nitrogen, a little bit of pinch of phosphorus, some iron chelate, sometimes uh, an herbicide like 2,4-D, and then humic acid. And you always saw better absorption by applying the humic acid with it. it it's really a nice carrier to aid in absorption. And 
I, I can reference this earlier. And my background's agronomy, so we do a lot of university testing. And um, corn was one where we were actually trying to make that nutrient last longer because you know that's one of their biggest expenses is is nitrogen. And you, when you apply humic acid with the nitrogen, the nitrogen lasts longer. That plant gets a longer opportunity to look to absorb that. Uh, our University of Tennessee trials, we got 20 more bushels of corn out of the same amount of nitrogen. That's only because that plant had a longer opportunity to, to absorb that nit nitrogen before it was lost to the environment. So that's what you're really doing with, with humic substances and why you're using them. You're trying to get that plant a longer opportunity to absorb these deliverables that you're presenting it. 